welcome to this, my third session in the series of instructional videos for piano, uh, curated by the Jazz Institute of Chicago for the Jazz Mix program. So if you didn't get a chance to see my first two videos, I would recommend that you go back and check those out, as this is somewhat a continuation of those. And my focus is to make sure that these videos are accessible to all instrumentalists, not just pianists. So we're going to just kind of deal with a specific area that we call comping. So comping, that's C-O-M-P-I-N-G. And it kind of looks like um, the word competition. <clears throat> In jazz, do we compete with each other? Trying to outplay each other while someone is trying to solo, you're doing a whole lot of uh, ex exploratory, experimental uh, craziness in the background. Or is it more related to the word complementary, so that you're complementing the other by playing as much supportive information, as it were, uh, just to push them, cushion them, give them the foundation in which the blow over, or the solo over. But now, in actuality, the word copying actually is derived from Yes, a company, as in um, a pianist accompanying a soloist. But you know, I'm going to stretch it just a little bit further. C O M is calm or communication. And if you put a B on that, That's combining of different harmonic structures. In other words, polychords, what we call polychords, and combining two sorts of chord structures to create that foundation for comping and supporting the soloist. We're going to get started. And to help you to build your pianistic skills, I have some of the tools of the trade. Measuring tape and a clip. Well, let's see, measuring tape, we've got measures in music, right? Not about that. And so, a lot of times we use these clips to clamp down the music when we're playing outdoors in the wind. <laughs> no wind in, inside here today, but these kind of uh, uniquely relate to the piano, and I'll show you how. Now, we're going to be dealing with copying uh, with the use of what we call parallel fourths. And ironically, when we talk about parallel fourths, we're talking about the intervals in the major scale, one, two, three, four. And then from that four, we go up to the next fourth and so on. So there's this juxtaposition. And, and speaking about juxtaposition, I'm talking about finger position. So, Here's the tape measure. I'm going to pull it out to exactly four inches. And with four inches, you literally have four white keys. One, two, three, four. Which means that each key is one inch apart, or one inch in, in, in the distance, rather. Now this just so happens that this clamp is exactly to the measure one fourth or four intervals. So that means that every time that you press down four keys with this clamp, that you're going to be literally playing in parallel fourths. Now just think of your fingers as resting on the keys when you play the piano. You rest your fingers down, and you keep the positioning 
just as sturdy and as straight and as in alignment as this clamp. So that when you move it to the next set of keys, you would maintain that parallel fourth alignment. And it doesn't matter where you play that on the keyboard, whether you jump up here, as long as your fingers stay in that parallel fourth alignment, then you're always going to maintain that juxtaposition. And it doesn't matter if you add a third finger as such, uh, in the, because there's always going to be two notes in between. So you have those two notes in between. So here are the two notes in between, and the next parallel fourth, and so on. You got it? Okay. Just to visualize it even from a different perspective, let's look at the chart. So in the building of a polychord, we're going to use parallel fourths in the left hand. So in this case, you have G, C, and F played in the left hand as noted in the light blue color. In the right hand, also in the blue color, you have a triad chord in the third position, and that so happens to be an F chord, F major chord. However, minor, relative minor of F is D, so we're in the key of D minor. So we're going to play C, F, and A in the right hand. So we've got two different chord structures being played simultaneously and moved up and down in parallel. And we can even move that up a half step to some combination of black and white keys as notated here with the yellow markings on the black notes. So let's get on the piano and just play with this. So Again, we are working in the realm of D minor melodic scale. So, starting with D, if you count four from D, you have one, two, three, four. That's G. So that's a certain feel you have two white notes in between that fourth. So if you count four up from G, you have one, two, three, four. So we're going to play what we refer to as parallel fourths. We're going to do it all, all with our left hand. And we're going to move each one up a half or, or a whole step in some cases but essentially to the next group of white no notes so you have And back down. So let's remember this one. It starts on G, so you have G, C, and F. Now we're going to create a complex chord by superimposing a triad chord on top of the parallel fourths. So we're going to select a F triad and the relative minor of F is D. So essentially it's the same chord 
So we're going to start with C, F, and A. And in the case of D minor, it's D, this is a seventh, the F is a minor third, and the A is a fifth. And we're going to also move that chord up to the next group of white notes, and so on. And we're going to correspond that movement with movement of the left hand. So it looks like this. Move it down at oh, oh, next group. You hear how expansive that sounds? Now we're going to do this in real time. First by creating a bass line that's uh, based on the D minor melodic scale. So we will start off uh, with D of course and play each successive note giving a full four count value to each note and a two count value to each note. And then finally a one count value to each note. And that's ascending and descending. And then we'll loop that as the basis for our comping on top of the groove. So for those of you who work with logic or tools or sonar, uh, this will be fun to create your own Complement track. So here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four.
yeah, yeah, I know. As soon as we're getting into it, then it's time to, to stop. I'm running out of time, but you don't have to stop. In fact, you can explore more and more. And for you uh, advanced piano players, you can try various uh, patterns, for example, chromatically down, or down a minor third, and up a half step. But keeping that juxtaposition of the polychords, the parallel force, and, and the triad on the top. So next time, we'll get into some more linear playing with some slick licks. So bring your uh, axe and your jargon dictionary. See you next time.